Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the series as well. And today in episode 23, we are going to be talking about the different types of fasting. So we know there are so many different reasons for fasting. We have kind of religious duties, there's cultural practices, trying to reduce body fat generally, a form of detox, maybe some way just to try and keep a, a bit of a change in terms of our diet potentially. So there are so many different reasons and more than what I've just mentioned. But within that, there are actually different approaches to fasting, different styles of fasting, different kind of formats for one of a better word. So I thought, why not summarize them in this episode and then see if you think one of those are quite useful for you or if you want to trial them out. And if you do, don't forget to let me know in the comment section below because I'll be interested to see if you do some form of fasting based off of this series. That would mean a lot to me because I'm a big believer in the benefits of fasting in some way, shape or form for some body. So, without further ado, let's get into the different styles of fasting. So, we know that one of the famous ones that a lot of people might be familiar with is the kind of 5-2 split. Meaning, 5 days you eat generally in within reason, moderation what you eat. And then 2 days you can generally limit your intake to 500 calories. This is what Michael Mosley, a person who really raised the awareness of this type of diet. Or, you kind of fast where you don't eat anything potentially until one meal after sunset sunrise, similar to what we do as Muslims during Ramadan. And right now I'm fasting while I'm recording this video. So it's the notion of choose kind of two days, generally spaced out. Normally kind of Monday or Thursday is generally quite often utilised, where you have a reduced intake in calories, a reduced intake in something shape or form, whether it's carbohydrates, fats. Generally carbohydrates is seen as the one to be limited, and then your calories are limited down to 500 calories, on those two days, so it gives you a chance or your body a chance to go into that kind of detox mode, that ketosis mode, and then see if you can the body has time to detox itself and all the benefits of fasting that I've mentioned already in this series. So that's quite a common one that people know about, the five two split. Now another one which is more of a change in style of eating generally that a lot of people look at is the hour split. Now I mentioned about the 5-2 split which is a day split, so 5 days eating, 2 days a limited intake or no intake potentially. But this is more of a hour split day to day. So generally the awareness or the notion of eating was about breakfast, lunch, dinner, maybe dessert. So this notion of eating portions throughout the day. Now although there are differences of opinion whether this is actually beneficial for the body because you know you're not giving it time to rest potentially and it's processing food every so often. Um, but with that put to the side, this is looking at giving yourself a window of opportunity during the day where you're in ketosis, you're utilizing fats, and then the window when you can eat. So it's not spread out throughout the day, it's more of a condensed manner. Now you might have heard of the 16-8 split, where 16 hours in a day, in a 24 hour period, you are fasting. Generally people do this overnight whilst they are sleeping which is perfectly valid and then eight hours they are eating and what this generally does is that it limits your intake within a period of time that you may not realize is actually quite easy to do and what it kind of hopefully prevents is that late night snacking and then snacking throughout the day because you're going to eat in a certain window so potentially you can have from 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock so 10 in the morning to 6 o'clock at night is when you eat so you probably just have uh, late lunch, uh, sorry, late breakfast, and then a bit of lunch, and then a dinner, and then you won't eat until that ten o'clock the next day. But people have the fourteen ten split, so fourteen hours and ten hours eating. If it's sixteen to eight is too extreme. Some people can go even further where they do eighteen hours and six hours. This is a lot of maths in my head while I'm doing this, but um, it's an, a notion of a change in style on a day to day basis. So maybe on the weekend, perhaps you might take a break from that 16 hour split but generally a lot of people look at this other form of fasting which it is where portions of the day you're fasting and then portions of the day you are eating but not snacking or eating throughout the day which is what this fasting procedure is trying to avoid so we've got four, uh, five two split and now we've got 16 to eight split day split and hour split but what about other forms of fasting another one is literally alternate day fasting so where you fast one day eat what you want the next day fast another day eat what you want the next day and that's quite self-explanatory now again all of these variations i'm talking about 
can be designed to better suit you. So you might want to do a limited intake on Monday, so 500 calories on Monday. Yeah, general amount on Tuesday, 500 calories on Wednesday. Or you might want to reduce it down even further. You might want to change it around. It's entirely up to you, but these are the different styles of alternate day fasting. It's now the third one I'm talking about here. But you just, essentially, without making it so obvious, alternate. You have fasting one day, eating another day. And I think that's what it is to it. I don't think there's much else to really talk about unless you want to change what you eat and but that's now changing your diet this is why i'm trying to be very particular about just showing you the different modes of fasting not talking about what to eat because that's about changing your diet um, which is the whole another ball game but alternate day fasting is another one now another one is a 24 hour fast now some people do a water fast where they only have water for 24 hours and they do this every so often as like a extreme acute form of a detox where your body goes shifts into uh, ketosis in in a very um not extreme fashion but a very long term fashion for that twenty four hour period, um and many people utilize that as a form of a detox, whereas the sixteen to eight split was more like a lifestyle change, the five to two was more of a kind of like a weekly detox just to limit your intake in the week, whereas this twenty four hour detox is actually primarily designed to be purely a detox kind of procedure for your body every so often maybe kind of once a month perhaps. I've seen a few people when I did this series two years ago on LinkedIn um, talking about a 24-hour water fast um, every so often. So that's something else to consider. If you're not too keen on fasting, but maybe just want to try it every so often, just to kind of detox yourself, a 24-hour um, water fast um, is obviously of benefit. Now, a 24-hour dry fast, meaning there's no water, something to be very cautious about, something I wouldn't advise, you know, but speak to a healthcare professional to think of it's Wise, if it's good for your body, um, that's not for debate. Sometimes, you know, make sure you have at least a snack is obviously quite useful because your body doesn't want to go 24 hours or 48 hours or 72 hours without any food, even though it can, but it's the water that is really critical, you know. So keep that in mind whenever you're doing any form of fasting. Keep yourself hydrated wherever you can. So 24-hour fast is another option. Now, dry fasting is another term to what um, many Muslims do during Ramadan, which is no food, no drink, nothing passes your mouth for a set period of time. Now, this is also something that people just look at as a form of practice, a form of detox as well. Um, for those who may not be looking at it for religious purposes, they may be looking at it as a form of fasting, as a form of extreme form of fasting. And you actually see many YouTube videos where people who may not be Muslim try it out to see what does their body cope with or adopt to, how does their body respond to this form of fasting compared to maybe the lighter forms that I've mentioned previously in this episode so far. But as a mode of fasting, dry fasting is another term. Now, I wanted to make sure you're aware of the other types of words and phrases that are utilised when we're talking about fasting. So now you heard, heard me talk about fasting throughout this whole series, right? But people talk about time-restricted eating as a form of fasting. There's fasting mimicking diets as a mode of fasting. There's meal skipping as a mode of fasting. These are kind of different interchangeable terms. Are those slightly different? Time-restricted eating is another term to talk about the 16 to 8 split, for example. So these are just terms to be aware of whenever you're reading articles or newspapers or you're talking to people. Just so you're not clueless about, oh, what does that mean? So there's just different interchangeable terms for fasting. So that's it for today's episode. I put the different modes of fasting in the description box below. So if you uh, wanted just to keep an eye on them or wanted to remind yourself what they were, feel free. And as ever, I've got the Instagram reels for each of these episodes on my page. Check me out on Instagram if you can. Uh, give me a follow if you're enjoying this series and also a subscribe here on this channel if you've enjoyed this series or any of the videos I've posted recently. So without further ado, because we've got another six episodes left of this series, I hope to see you in the next one. So take care and I'll see you soon.